from the Oak Wall Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, this is Jesse Oakley III, and welcome to the Oak Zone, where we provide positive words of wisdom for you to have you people. Now, Monday through Friday, I would give plethora of positivity through my normal series, The Oak Zone. But today is Sunday morning, and it is time for the Sunday morning chat series. Here I get to interview a plethora of positive people that are making a big difference within their community. Whether they're speakers, writers, yoga instructors, Bitcoin experts, animal shelter rescue people, as well as organ, don organ donors. You will hear from them about the positive difference that they're making within their community. And today, we got ourselves a darn good show. I've always wanted to go into the world of public speaking. And I've had a couple of public speakers in my past episodes that you'd like to check out on the Sunday morning chat series. But for today, I am admired. I have admired this wonderful gentleman and his public speaking skills for a long time. And I got to know that what was his secrets, what was his steps that he went through, what was his journey. And when I think of great public speakers, I can look no further than the person I'm about to interview right now. And that is none other than Mr. Kane Kamano. Kane, how's it going? Hey, aloha, Jesse. It's so good to be here. Aloha to you, to you too, my man. Aloha to you too. Without any further delay, let's chat. All right, let's do it. All right. Now, how did you get your start in public speaking? When I was born, right out of the womb. What kind of question is that, Jesse? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, I was born and raised in a large family. My dad is one of 12. So I, I've had, I have 36 first cousins on just one side of the family. So it, we were always just kind of competing for communication time, talking time, you know? So I think that's where I kind of overcame the fear of speaking early. But then my, re my first real job was as an insurance salesman, a door-to-door -door insurance salesman with a combined insurance company in the mid nineties. And if you're gonna, Imagine someone knocking on your door, it doesn't matter what season. Well, here in Hawaii, we only have one season really, but, and they're trying to sell you insurance. Could you imagine what type of guts that would take? Um, we were given scripts to memorize and just read off, go off of the script and follow it word for word. And, and I realized very early on that that works. There, there was a system in place and I was very successful doing it. And so I think I learned kind of just the real basics of public speaking about how to influence and having confidence. And yeah, so that was the start of it. And then I joined Toastmasters in 2008. All right, fantastic. Now, who were your influences when it comes to you being a professional speaker? Ooh, well, I, I gotta say, you know, my, this is an indirect answer. My foster mom, Alyssa Kim, who raised me, you know, showed me so much love that I was able to, when I grew up later in my life, who I am now, I'm able to exude love to my audiences. And so obviously she is kind of my, my rock. She's been gone for at least 10 years now, but I still look to her as for advice. You know, So it's kind of interesting. And then there's W. Clement Stone, who was the founder of Combined Insurance Company, that company I was with for about five years. I learned a lot about uh, positive mental attitude. You know, to be enthusiastic, you have to act enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was one of, you know, Tony Robbins, like, got some of his books behind me and uh, all the greats. All right. But those are some of my first early influencers. All right, fantastic. Now, when it comes to professional speaking, what were the major challenges that you faced on your journey to becoming a professional speaker? Mm. You know what, to be honest, once again, it's an indirect answer, but one of the major life challenges I had was I had a bad habit, a very bad habit. I, 
you should gamble. So with that insurance company, I was doing so well and making a lot of money at a young age very quickly. But then I started hanging around the wrong people. And this is how I tell my story. As a you know, 23, 25 year old, I was making $45,000 a year, mid 90s, mid 20s, $45,000 a year, but I had a $50,000 a year gambling habit. Now, you're right, exactly. So now if you think about that, I was had a great career starting off and then I get into this really bad habit that turns my life upside down. So that's one, if you think about it, that's one major challenge that stopped me from growing as a communicator, as a speaker, as a better human being. And then, you know, later in life, because I thought I'd kicked the habit, but I didn't. I got married in 2004. I was still gambling a little. So my divorce, <laughs> I didn't get divorced. I almost got divorced. It's a huge challenge. So I had to, once again, take a break, focus on my family. But like they say, you can always uh, turn challenges into stepping stones and that's where we are today. So some people say they're grateful for their challenges. I don't know if I'm grateful for some of mine. Uh, I wish I could take them back, but it is what it is. I'm grateful for the path I, I am on, but those are the challenges, yeah. All right. Now, speaking of stepping stones, what were some of your best moments in becoming a professional speaker? Ooh, well, Okay, the, the first one would have to be when I won my first district championship with Toastmasters International in 2011. And it just so happened that year, the International Convention was in Las Vegas. Yep. And so I got to meet one of my, my he's my friend now. He was my mentor back then, the 2001 world champion of public speaking, Darren LaCroix. Yep. You know, I asked him for some, feedback after I gave my speech. We, we were in contact before that, but you know how they, the, the speakers, the exhibitors, they have boots and tables, mm -hmm. you know? So after, or at some point before the contest, I said, hey, I know you don't know me, but would you mind watching my speech contest and giving me feedback after? And just so happens he was supporting another contestant, Scott Pritchard, right, from yep. Vegas. Yep. So we talked after and, uh, he gave me some great piece of advice from then. My, my speech was about forgiveness. It's kind of a heavy topic. There was no humor planned at all. Zero, zero humor. He said, hey, Kane, you know, I loved your speech. It's a good topic. But for a speech contest, it's not guaranteed you win if you have humor. But it's pretty much guaranteed you lose if you don't have humor. And so that's one of my life lessons and speaking I took away. And one of my best moments is that first speech contest. And then, you know, I, I've been a multiple winner of District 49. In fact, I competed five times, won the championship four. And it was in the 2015, 2016 season when I went back to back is when I really, it was a different feeling than 2011. It was like, wow, I, I think I'm really meant to do this. I'm really meant to be here. Those other wins, I didn't feel that way. Right. Now, there was there's going to be a person that's going to come up to you that is amazed with what you've done, especially with your career as a professional speaker. They want to know more about you. They want to be in your shoes. If you can offer this person this a solid advice, what would it be? Don't gamble. <laughs> No, uh, seriously, you know, I would say get a coach, not, not just a mentor, but a coach who's kind of in the, and I, I know that comes up a lot. And before I became, a, I'm currently a presentations coach myself, but before I came on, whenever I heard that answer, I'm like, ah, you're just trying to sell me your coaching thing. But I truly, truly believe it. You know, we have helped in all areas of our life, if we need car work, <clears throat> we seek a mechanic, yeah. right? If we have health issues, we seek a doctor. If we have any type of problem, they are in our, my viewpoint, many coaches, you know, they kind of fix your problem. 
And so I would say get a coach, but get a coach that not only teaches the tools and techniques on speaking, but also can help on the inner workings of who you are as a person. Because I think that's where a lot of the blocks come in, a lot of the setbacks, the things that hold us back, fear, you know, being unconfident. Where does that come from? So a lot of speaking coaches, they might not dive under the hood as much because maybe because they probably don't know how, but I'd say definitely find a coach who can not only give you the tools and techniques, but can help you uncover some of those fears and help you work through it. So that's probably my number one tip. If you want to get to where I am, you know, I, my friend used to tease me a lot. I do have a lot of books back there. I've read most of them, not all of them, but he said, oh, so then that's shelf help. <laughs> that is shelf help. But that's how I, yeah, <laughs> the I shelf help does kind of help. I go ahead, go ahead. I tell you what, shelf help, I don't have my own shelf help at my own house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so in a way, you know, at least reading books, is, I was coaching myself, trying to get better at, at every single part of my life. And uh, so that's a mini coach back there. All right. Fantastic. Now, is there any way that people can get a chance to know more about you and your professional speaking business and anywhere else? Yes, great question. I'm just starting to finish a website, kamekamano.com. I started a company last year as part of my high performance leadership project with Toastmasters International. Mm -hmm. It's called high, high performance presentations. So kamekamano.com. However, on January 25th, which will be soon, I know we're going back in time whenever you're watching this, but there will be a podcast called the Backstory Podcast where I'm a co-host with a fellow competitor of mine this past season, we competed against each other. And this is the first time I, she's new to District 49 Hawaii. And when I saw her compete at the district level, we're in the same um, division level. We're in the same division. I was like, ooh, who is this girl? She, she ended up taking second, but I started paying attention and I've been paying attention ever since. And we are now no longer competitors, but collaborators. So we're, we started the Backstory Podcast, where we interview the top speakers, storytellers in the industry. Uh, we're going to start with, and once again, you got to go back and relook at our episodes. But my mentor, my friend, the 2001 World Champion of Public Speaking, Darren LaCroix, that'll be our first interview. And then right after him, uh, every Monday, we... We're going to try and start with all the world champions, but after Darren will be Mark Brown. All right. So that's where you can find me. It's on Facebook. Sorry, it'll be three places. Facebook, there's a, I think there's three backstory dot, uh, the backstory podcast platforms, but just look for the one with my mug on it. All right. That's ours. And then we're going to upload it to iTunes and Google play and Spotify. So you can search there and then we'll give you all the con the condensed version, the, the nuggets in 10 minutes on YouTube. So we'll have a Backstory Podcast YouTube page. All right. That's where you can find me. Thank you, <laughs> Jesse. And, and I tell you what, for those people that forgot about where to go to look for Kane, do not fret because links will be in the description right below. So after you watch this episode, you can actually go to the links that Kane mentioned and it'll be right there at your ready. All right. Now we are almost at the end of the interview here and it's shout out time. Now, do you have any money that you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah, definitely my wife. I mean, uh, for her sticking with me through thick and thin and everything, she's heard all my speeches hundreds of times. <laughs> so the patience that the Lord has blessed her with, uh, definitely I'll give her a shout out. And then, you know, all my friends and family that, they really don't know what I do. My, my family, a lot of my, my cousins, they don't know what I do. So I give a shout out to them because I'm going to force them to watch this. <laughs> All right. Now, there are a bunch of happy people that are watching this episode and they are inspired and they're amazed with the story and the words of wisdom that you do have. 
for this last question I have for you. If you can offer any solid words of wisdom for the happy people watching this video, what would it be? Ooh, you know, this is a really good one because I've been thinking about my past four contest speeches that I won. And when you look at it, all of them, they have all pertinent messages as far as words of wisdom that I'll leave you with. Mm -hmm. The first one was just two steps away, which is about, I mentioned forgiveness. So my first word of wisdom is forgive often. It's a lesson that I needed to learn. Second one was about kindness. So be kind. The third speech was about legacy. What type of legacy? Are you thinking about what type of legacy you're leaving? Or in other words, what type of example are you currently to others? And then the last word of wisdom, I'd say, which is this last speech contest in 2020, is about having the hard conversations. So in other words, when my wife and I, I told the story about how my wife and I were almost going through a divorce and I was just pushing off the conversation, but a good friend of mine stopped me in my tracks, you know, shook me, you know, what good friends do, like get your, get your stuff together and, and go talk to her. And just by that simple conversation, which was a hard conversation, our marriage, we're still married to today, you know, so have those hard conversations. Amen, amen, amen. Those are fantastic words of wisdom that you have to share for the happy people. And I'm sure that the happy people are 200% grateful. On behalf of all the happy people out there, I thank you for being a guest for the Oak Zone Sunday morning chat series. And we really appreciate it big time. Oh, no, thank you, Jesse. Thank you for having me, inviting me. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for adding the links below. I keep forgetting about that part, but hey. Hey, good luck to you with your with what you got going on here. You know, I'm a huge fan of you. You're, you are a positive person. I love having you as a friend. Good seeing you. Thank you very much. And this concludes the Oak Zone Sunday Morning Chat Series episode. And if you want more plethora of positivity, go to YouTube, type my name, Jesse Oakley III, Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, like, and share these videos with other happy people that you know. And for, you can also check out the Oak Zone Monday through Friday, but you can also check out the amazing Sunday morning chat series where I get a chance to interview amazing, positive people like my friend Kane. Uh, this has been Jesse Oakley III, and until then, you take care, have a great day. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, and aloha. Aloha.